Two things that make Shadow Necro absolutely perfect for the Abattoir of Zir. We're in the Flesh Eater board, and this is where the Tears of Blood Glyph is going to go to make targeted with damage to elites and also resistance to all elements stronger. But the thing about the Tears of Blood is it's also going to boost the intelligence value and that on both of them, which means another 7100 intelligence plus. And we all know that Wither just boosts our overall shadow damage over time significantly if we have even more intelligence. But not only that, the bosses in the Apple 12 Zero are three. Three Bloodseekers with various different affixes. But how do you fight these the best? By not fighting them. I mean, that is what this build does, right? We're going to throw in our Bone Storm. We're going to put on the Shadow Damage over time. We're going to curse them. We're going to go Blood Mist. We're going to come out of the Blood Mist to curse them. We're going to pull them together with Corpse Tendrils. Automatic Corpse Tendrils again. They're permanently stunned. We're going to Blood Mist again. <laughs> Bone Storm all the time going on on three targets. Way easier to keep them up. And then they just melt down all at the same time. Plus, as Ixfeld's Corroded Cygnus procs are going on, they're getting exploded. Now, that's not the only part that is very interesting because... We have 10 minutes to go through a dungeon and we have to kill as many mobs as possible as fast as possible, right? Well, the main interesting part about this build is that you can technically, due to the storm and everything, just continuously keep pulling things together. I mean, right now we're at 15,000 armor, but we actually have a disobedience low roll. So we can actually beef this up even further and then we can just keep pulling things together. That will follow us around in the Abu 12 Zero, right? I mean, where we just take a huge pack of mobs. We are essentially, again, not able to die because we're in our blood mist. We get our armors going on the whole time. And our shadow and damage over time will just eat their souls continuously. Plus, the more mobs you actually do pull together, the more mobs get affected by Ixfeld's Corroded Signet at the same time to then explode to the millions of random crits that you're getting. And we did actually change quite some things here in the build to accommodate even more for how do we do more damage per second? How do we not like generally try to maximize out Ixfeld's Corroded Signet, which is a nice thing? Now, how do we just make our overall damage output higher that we're then able to dominate the Abattoir Zir even harder. Before you get into that, let me anticipate a comment. But Pony, what about boss damage? Because on single bosses, this is lacking. I mean, first and foremost, there are three bosses and not one. And you can actually pull them together the whole time. So everything we do, like all our shadow damage over time, just working nicely. But it's also that all our procs from Ixfelds all working at everyone at the same time. And well, I mean... I wouldn't say we're lacking the boss damage. I mean, compared compared to a <laughs> compared to a barbarian, yes, we're lacking, but we are necros. We're just trying to do it as fast as necros can. Let me tell you, this is not lacking. This is quick enough. Now, there's another interesting layer, and that's the change to the Book of the Dead and also our vampiric powers that I haven't mentioned yet. But first, let's go on gear. Three key pieces. The first one is the little wall to have the infinite bone storms for infinite barrier for maximum damage and shadow blight key passive overload damage over time damage over time procs then again into more damage over time Ixfeld's corroded signet lucky hit the cascading damage which brings us back to Ixfeld's corroded signet and here you do actually want a high roll on the actual Ixfeld's damage because that is the damage that multiplies so if Ixfeld's triggers it goes from the 41,000 damage times 120 percent times 400 percent critical strike damage and so on Lucky hit as high as possible on every item that can have lucky hit, which means Ring of Sacrilegious Souls, which also has a very high lucky hit chance, rank to all corpse skills as we're corpse skilling left, right, and center. And here, the most important part is that you need this as a low second roll because more corpse explosion, more corpse tendrils, more pulling together of the bosses, enemies, but also more corpse explosions for free on top of the things you're doing anyways means essentially more lucky hit chance for Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. Now, the amulet wants corpse tendrils. There's three things that can critical strike here. We have our Blight initial damage. Then we have our Ixfeld's crit. And we also have the Shadow Blight key passive, which can crit. And here we're looking for ranks to all corpse skills, the Gloom passive, yes, Gloom passive, total armor, and shadow damage over time. This is actually the perfect ST amulet. It doesn't get better. And we put this here on the amulet for the crit damage to have the maximum Shadow Blight key passive overstack happening. <gasps> and also the perfect Ixfeld's corroded crit. Now, technically, you could swap over the blighted aspect over to your amulet for another 60% multiplicative damage on all your damage. 
I am in favor of that right now for this build. This is not the Giga Dot that's trying to just do the maximum damage of Ixfeld's Corroded Signet. We're sacrificing the maximum damage of Ixfeld's for a more stable damage over time. And that's where it might be beneficial to swap things a little bit around. But on the other hand, it does incredible damages like this as well. On the one, you definitely want to have damage over time. Critical Strike damage makes intelligence 100% because we need the maximum value of intelligence you can get. Why that? Wait for the power ground section. Flicker step I would always call mandatory. Movement speed plus, very nice, but also ultimate skill damage. Comes in so handy to boost our ultimate skills so high that we're essentially continuously doing even more damage with our bone storm and then damage reduction from close is very important plus the cooldown reduction on top of the amplified cooldown reduction to have bone storm every single second active the amulets are running the bone storm into shadow damage and here you want an absolute max roll enemies damaged by bone storm take shadow damage over time that one gets boosted obviously by all your multipliers and you want this as a base value as high as possible ranks to blight on your glove yes lucky hit chance shadow damage over time and critical strike chance all work perfectly together now the chest is what keeps us alive and that's where the shielding storm comes in shielding storm is a 100 need you want a total armor percentage roll here as well shadow damage doesn't hurt maximum life is good could also go for a second damage reduction this is damage reduction from distant you could also take damage reduction while fortified now the helmet is a variety so we could go for a god slayer crown here but we would lose a total armor percentage losing a total armor percentage and disobedience puts us 10,000 armor which is 5,000 less for the abba 12 zir considering that you have continuously bone storm up and you're actually in the blood mist as well you could forego this for harlequin crest or as i said the god slayer crown i do prefer my helmet though for 12,500 base value and then with a high roll on disobedience this is 0.6 roll we're going to be around 16 17,000 armor and even if enemies are armor breakers in the abba 12 zero we're not going to struggle what we're missing here on the helmet is currently lucky hit chance while barrier as we're continuously having barrier to also boost that up but intelligence is good, total armor, maximum life to be even more sturdy. Cooldown reduction could be a thing, but you have all the cooldown reduction in the world already. Lastly, we're playing T-Bald's Will for the 40% multiplicative damage that whenever we dash or blood mist applies obviously straight away. And then we're going to have everything we deal 40% more damage. That's too good to say no to, especially that the dashing also refills our blight essence. We'll get to the gameplay loop in a second to kind of iterate and explain what is happening and how we're doing this and for the vampire powers we have four and one that's optional and that one changes quite a lot first we need metamorphosis to dash around be unstoppable vampiric curse enemies and at the same time trigger lucky hit chance with the dashing of it because that lucky hit chance trigger does actually apply bonus bone storms as you're dashing through enemies what it means is for bonus multiplicative damage over time to enemies that are moving or affected by vampiric curse back to the vampiric curse again and then anticipation is so important because your ultimate skills deal 12% increased damage for each nearby enemy affected by your damage over time effect. Huh, 20% cooldown reduction is really nice. But if you think about this now, we have three vampires that are standing right next to each other. Definitely. We're getting another 36% multiplicative damage plus also on our bone storms that are just happening. We're not going to have just one bone storm. We're going to have multiple bone storms preferable all three pulled together while they're being pummeled by three to five bone storms at the same time and every bone storm does max damage every bone storm is having 36 percent multiplicative damage increase looking good raven is vampiric power is something we can talk about this is bonus attack speed that when you're out of your blood mist and you're spamming corpse explosion or blight you're doing it as fast as possible so that you're not going like with the corpse explosion is going to be like and the blight's so you're just shooting this out faster. And that's very important. Now for the final power, there's two things I will take and I will mix and match around with. Step one would be undying. Undying would actually keep us alive in case the damage of the vampires gets a little bit too high. So you're getting some damage. You go into your blood mist, your auto corpse explosions and tendrils cast, and that already keeps healing you. You come out, you get buried up, you heal yourself again automatically. Might be nice. But there's one I find even more interesting. And that would be playing Zangrin Brace. Because that will fortify us, obviously, the whole time as we're killing things. But also when we have a more fortify than half of your maximum life, you gain 8% critical strike chance. And I think that's that's something we kind of want to keep an eye out. Because having the 8% critical strike chance on top of everything already for free, 
while as we're also fortified we're going to be taking less damage could be very nice on top of the barrier to then also have the damage reduction from Fortify happening. Now, before we go into that monstrous Paragon board, let's go into Dungeon and I'll explain you the gameplay loop. Step one, throw on your Bone Storm and then dash blind, 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 pull everything together, go into Blood Mist to just zoom a bit further, dash through, blind, blind, as then T-Bolts will kind of refresh this. Everyone is taking their shadow damage over time. Blind, blind, dash, get more. Activate the next Bone Storm because if you can already activate another Bone Storm, why wouldn't you? Then you just essentially keep dashing and pulling things together. Now, you could just do a circle around to go back to check if anything survived. And as we're talking about Abbott of Zero, that's going to be the thing, right? Something might have survived. Then you go back around, pull it together to get even more enemies against each other. Fight some elites. Sometimes you also trigger your corpse tendrils yourself. You don't let it just auto-cast. Pull them together, spam Blight into them. And this is also the point where you really want to spam the blind as you pull things together with a full mana then when your lucky hit triggers for the bonus attack speed you start going away at it now we curse in between always because curse is straight up bonus damage don't forget to put that on as well you don't need it for the damage reduction uh, you don't need it for the cooldown reduction sorry but the curse is also damage reduction that you should not forget so having that like just in here on all these opponents is like 20 percent flat damage reduction on all of them on top of what we're doing while they're essentially just dying to your things, and they're also going to be reducing the cooldown of your blood miss. Now, to paint your picture on how a boss fight would work, I can also give you that rotation. So let's just blast through everything here really quickly as we have to kill all these opponents. You can see that the bone storms never stop being active, and that's an important thing here. Just a dash, by the way, triggered my bonus bone storms. So not, not even an ability. Just the dash, just the metamorphosis vampiric power. Dash through, trigger it, be done, you know? Don't always have to essentially have an ability happening. Because that's the good thing about meta. That's why you're playing it. I guess we should be having everyone. Now for the boss fight, or you Abitur of Zero opponents, you activate your storm, you throw some things on them to essentially get your first bonus storm active, then you dash through because the lucky hit chance can make bonus bone storms inside the bone storm already, even though it can only actually make it outside of the bone storms. Then as soon as one bone storm goes down, you try to just make the next one pull the enemy out of the existing bone storm to just have more going on, because you again want to have the continuous bone storming happening don't forget to curse them they instantly get stunned because they will get stunned the whole time anyways by shadow damage over time you have your x felts corroded signet proccing on and on around them you dash a little bit around you throw more blights and they just go down done melted and that plus the damage we're actually getting from the tears of blood Oh, I got a new X-Files Corroded Signal. That's kind of funny. Paragon board with quite some changes. First, Scorch is actually in the very beginning. Yes. And we can clap 65 points of intelligence for a huge damage over time boost. And we need a lot of shadow damage over time. This brings us up into the Flesh Eater board. And here we're going to put the Tears of Blood. That will then boost the damage to elites and ear the resistance to all elements. And that is extremely important. I'll get to that with the Book of the Dead. Plus, the intelligence will actually rise on both, which gives us roughly another 100 intelligence plus. We're getting roughly 800% damage, 250% multiplicative to the nodes. That's quite nice as we need maximum intelligence for Wither. Before we get to Wither, though, don't forget to take the critical strike damage. Then we're moving into the right side to Send of Death for the bonus multiplicative damage as we explode all the corpses or the bonus damage reduction, which is more likely to happen. And that is the nice thing because we have so much damage reduction going on with this build, plus the Imbiber Glyph on the damage while healthy, which is kind of its own multiplier. Also, don't forget to take the critical strike damage here and a little bit more dex. We can't sadly get into this node because that will take too many points. Since you want to also use as many core stats as possible right here. I mean, currently I can take some intelligence out to actually take some of the dexterity ones, right? Because simply, end of the day, it is just all about taking as many core stats as possible here for the Tears of Blood. Now we'll go into the Wither board, and that has so many amazing things. I mean, first, we need all the intelligence in the world. We currently have 800, but we'll get another 100 plus from the Tears of Blood. And this means that our Shadow Damage over Time effects have a 5% chance to deal 50% bonus damage, or rather now a 20% chance to deal 106% multiplicative bonus damage on all the millions it already deals. 
Now, the cool thing is we're getting damage reduction from shadow damage affected. We're getting bonus shadow damage over time, bonus shadow damage over time, then also more shadow damage, more resistance again, and all in all, more shadow damage plus another damage reduction. Ah, ah. yes, even more damage reduction. Lastly, we're going into the bone graph board. And here we actually take exploit to just get a little bit more damage versus vulnerable, but also multiplier versus vulnerable enemies. And we have them continuously vulnerable. Plus even more resistance to all elements and maximum life boost that just gets us a wee bit more healthy that we're not getting one damage bursted. Lastly, there needs to be a case made for the control glyph again, because technically you and your minions deal 10 to 20% increased damage to stunned or frozen enemies. You can stun these bosses. We'll have to try this out as soon as the abattoir releases. Maybe cut down on the willpower glyph down here to actually save some points and put the control glyph then here into the send of death board. Might be possible, especially as you're having like very good inroads here for another 20% multiplicative damage. Alternatively, we could cut down on the vulnerable glyph as there's a lot of intelligence as you're going in. To put vulnerable out for the bonus damage of vulnerable, put the intelligence in, and then we're essentially on instead of decks, we're gonna be focusing on int. When you get you get a lot in this tree, we could go just for the next 20 here. We have another 50 up here. So it's not it's not like a problem to essentially get all the intelligence together that you essentially need for this. Boom, that's 40 with the same amount of points, right? Could be good. Now our vulnerable, we're getting continuously from play corpse tunnels, and play corpse tunnels is so good in the Abba 12 zero because you're pulling everything together. Then you're automatically pulling everything together with a second corpse tendril. And yes, these bosses, they can just continuously be pulled together. So that is one source of stun. Plus, all your shadow skills can anyway stun the opponent. Huh. So while they're getting pulled together and they're standing in their pool of shadows, they might be continuously being stunned. Then they will be slowed and also damage reduced from your decrepify curse, which gives you more damage, more damage reduction from standing close to them. While we're in the Blood Mist, and the Blood Mist has five points in them for the maximum cooldown reduction, that then with the Amplify, that then with the Decrepify, we instantly have it active again, plus the Bone Storm to be always buried, always Blood Misted, <laughs> with a Corpse Explosion on maximum points for maximum damage. And lastly, the Blight, as you then get out to throw the Blight in, and every hit of Blight can crit the basic damage of Blight, plus the Shadow Damage over time can trigger Wither, and the initial hit can also trigger even more of the lucky hit to get them stunned again. Lastly, don't forget about the 15% damage reduction with Bone Storm and another 18% damage reduction for having everything sacrificed. I mean, we're, we're so damn ready. So damn ready. Lastly, the interesting part with the Book of the Dead is first we get 30% multiplicative critical strike damage for the Golem. Then also more multiplicative damage with the vulnerable enemies. And lastly, there is an intriguing thing here. We always play the resistance to all elements because that brings us up to 70, 70, 70. Well, considering we're in the Abba 12 zero right now and my shadow resistance is already very good, uh, we're kind of there already. Plus the Tears of Blood is going to boost our resistance to all elements even further by another 250%. Considering the boost to that, plus sacrificing all our little skeletons for either diamonds or in this case, lightning resistance and poison resistance or cold resistance, we can completely swap away from the Book of Dead Reaper defenders, and we can actually swap in Reapers to then increase our shadow damage 21% multiplicative. And yes, we have not been running this the whole time, just to show you that it's another nice boost on top of what we're already doing. I think Shadow Necro is uniquely ready for the Abba 12 Zero. With the multiple opponents coming, stacking shadow damage, more opponents, more shadow damage, everything. And it's as ready as the Blood Search or the Bone Spear build. And if you're interested in both of them right now, give them a view and tell me which of the three are you actually going to play.